What is up, Corona Fax Nation? It's your host, Maddie B. Raps. I'm here today to give you another true tale from quarantine. Stories from the crypt during quarantine. That's the new name of our show. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Johannes Kelpius. Who's Johannes Kelpius? Crazy guy. Romanian German monk religious cult member from Pennsylvania who might have also maybe maybe not had the Philosopher's Stone. So his, who is this crazy monk whose life got flipped, turned upside down? That's right, we're talking about the fresh cult. A Wissaconic? Wissachicon? Wissachicon. Preak outside of Philadelphia. <clears throat> you see, the city of Philadelphia was founded by British aristocrat and oatmeal boy William Penn Sr. in 1682 as a place where he, a Quaker, and other religious minorities in the British Empire could come to seek refuge and freely practice their own religions. Being a Quaker, Penn eventually was able to attract other persecuted minorities from a wide range of countries, including the Huguenots from France, Mennonites from Germany, Amish from Germany, Catholics from just about everywhere, Lutherans, and Jews from England, France, Holland, Germany, Sweden, Finland, Ireland, and Wales. It was only a matter of time, of course, before these rumors reached the ears of one Johannes Kelpius in Transylvania, in what we now know as Romania. Johannes Kelpius was born in 1647. Like many other figures in history, we don't really know much about his early life, until, of course, he started attending the university at the University of Aldorf, Altdorf. near Nuremberg. While attending school in what would today be considered Germany, he Latinized his name to Johannes Kelpius to better fit in with his fellow contemporaries. At the age of 22, Kelpius had acquired a master's degree in theology, and he had published several educational texts. While attending school, Kelpius went through his edgy, too woke for a medieval Catholic church phase, and it was pretty common at the time. Specifically, he became enraptured with the idea of pietism. Now, pietism is a religious sect within the Lutheran faith, which itself was a split from the Catholic faith. The Reformation was a very, very complicated time. Pietism emphasizes the Lutheran doctrine of using biblical tradition and structure to assist living a pious and vigorous life. Bless up. Kanye West for president, 2020. They're kind of like the people, the Puritans in New England, who just wanted to live that simple, you know, basic, like, all I need is Jesus and bread kind of lifestyle. You know, so big ups to my guy. Sometimes, you know, you just want to, you want to live that simple Alaskan TLC documentary lifestyle. That was pretty trendy at the time. He started simping for a man by the name of Johann Jakob Zimmerman who was a mathematician, an astronomer, and a cleric. Zimmerman criticized the structure of the Lutheran Church. He claimed that it was too hierarchical, like the Catholic Church, and the point should be to better oneself to serve God, not showering a religious institution with those dollar dollar bills, you know? Zimmerman then created a group of like-minded individuals, the finest that humanity has ever seen. He assembled a team. It was the Avengers. No, I'm kidding. Uh, he assembled a team of religious fanaticals, including his most famous stan, man in question, Johannes Kelpius. Uh, and after that, they began to petition for a charter to the New World, specifically to that religiously tolerant colony of Pennsylvania. Sadly, before Papa Zimmerman could bring our boys to the, to the New World, to the Pennsylvania Holy Land, he passed away, leaving, of course, our main man, Johann Kelpius, uh, in a totally desolate and inconsolable state. He was destitute and so <sighs> rocked to the core. 
But then, his contemporaries nominated him as the new leader of the cult, and presumably, Kelpius became a lot more content with his situation. Kelpius and his 40 other band of merry men landed in the New World in 1693, and after drifting around from town to town for quite some time, that was a Bruce Springsteen reference. I'm, 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 I'm artsy like that, ladies. Ladies love an artsy guy. Kelpius and his squad ended up encamping along the Wissahickon Creek near Germantown. The religious Woodstock 1699 commune was a whole new breed of crazy. What kind of crazy stuff? <laughs> you may be wondering. Well, you know that radical fringe group was into meditating and studying the Bible in solitude? Radical. Eventually, they got off the ground and into one single large building where they all slept and lived communally together, which was pretty common at the time. <clears throat> Later on, their society reached new heights when they built other so societal facets, such as a school, and a church, and not to mention other famous religious faces like Christopher Witt and Conrad Mathai resided in their town for quite a long period of time. They had the whole cast. It was like PC Jonestown, man. It was good times. But then, things changed. Johannes Kelpius, he died. Now, the conspiracy theories surrounding Johann's death are like Shane Dawson level. Like, they're like mind-blowingly insane. Uh, but probably, for a little taste, I'll give you the most famous one. Um, there's a theory that Kelpius somehow came into possession of the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, and as part of his will, he had it thrown into the Wissahickon Creek, or maybe the Schuylkill River, in 1708. But hey, that's just a theory. A cult theory. And... Kelpius also had... Uh, a lot of random, wacky other facts that I thought were too interesting to not put on this list. They were, they were pretty wacky. So I was like, okay, let's put them on the list. As noted by the Historical Society of Pennsylvania, let's take a little gander, shall we? <clears throat> Number one, Christopher Witt, previously mentioned as a Kelpius fangirl, did one of the 13 colonies first oil paintings with Kelpius as the main subject. I'm gonna be honest here. Okay, see that? It's pretty bad. I mean, come on. He looks like a cursed photo that, that one would find on Reddit or, or some kind of bizarre Quaker Oats and scream by Edvard Munch love child. I mean, I, I can't be the only one who sees this right. I, it's freaking me out. Uh, and of course, Kelpius and his cronies were among the first people in North America to own a pipe organ, which was built by our favorite simp, Chris Witt. So, as far as cults go, Kelpius was living that bougie 17th century lifestyle. <clears throat> Kelpius wrote a prayer book of hymns and songs he created over his lifetime, later published in English in, six, in 1761. It was titled The Art of the Deal. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was actually called A Short Essay and Comprehensive Method of Prayer. So, there's some random facts about our boy, Johannes Scalpius, and his bad painting. Sadly, all stories must come to an end, and the life of Mr. Scalpius, his insane, amazing life, also, unfortunately, had to come to an end. Uh, in 1708, Kelpius became very ill with tuberculosis, which was a common killer at the time, and despite his illness, he continued to lead his settlement like an absolute chad for the next few months until, of course, he succumbed to TB. And without having appointed a leader, the religious sect kind of broke apart. Like the Breakfast Club, they're like, You see us as Chris Witt, a guy who can't paint paintings. You see us as Conrad Mathai, who came here just to be religious. But you can call us 
the Quaker Oats Club. Don't you forget about me. And wrapping up, to this very day, you can go to the cave outside of Philadelphia, where the cult had their earliest little meetings and gatherings. You can go visit. I highly recommend you do. Maybe you'll be the one who gets to the bottom of whatever happened to that slippery philosopher's stone. I know, I, I'm, I'm looking for it, I'll tell you that. Anyway, that's all for this week on Corona Facts with Maddie B. Raps. <laughs> I gotta sneeze.